Hey folks, welcome back to Combo Class. I'm your teacher, Demotro, and today we're gonna have a slightly more lighthearted snack break. Because back here, I got all my clocks, and I got all my math, and really cool stuff like that. But I have a cool front yard too. And in our last snack break, I was eating just random weeds and flower petals and stuff because there wasn't much ripe. But now in the summertime, there's a bunch of ripe fruits out there, including tons of apples. So get ready to learn some answers to all the questions you forgot you had about apples. Here in my yard, we got my magnificent cats and tons of apples. Here's an apple tree that's quite interesting. You know how apples can be grafted where multiple branches can be on the same tree making different types of apples? Well, this tree has an example of that. This apple came from the main branch of the tree, but this grafted on branch makes an entirely different type of apple. A type with an interesting trait about it compared to this relatively normal type. Let me show you what's up with this branch's apples. Here's an apple from the main tree, and here's an apple from the grafted branch. Now, ignore the bug spots. People are too scared of those. You can cut around them and still enjoy your apple. But let's see what's on the inside of these apples. Here's the normal one. Looks apple-ish. And here's the grafted one. Pink! These pink apples have a special tart flavor. They're so good. So with all these different types of apples around, I was wondering this month, how much water is in apples? And when I looked it up, it turns out that for their mass, on average, apples are 85% water. And that might sound like a lot, but fruits and vegetables in general have a really high water weight. And let me flash on screen just a couple fruits and vegetables that surprisingly have more water in them than apples. But 85% is still relatively a lot of their weight being water and apples seem relatively light for some reason. What about an apple's volume makes them so light? You may have noticed that apples can float in water, whereas a plum can't. Why is that? Well, the apple must be more buoyant than the water and the plum isn't. They both contain some water weight, as well as some stuff in them that's heavier than water, like their skin and their sugar. And for the plum, that overbalances it and makes it less buoyant than the water. Whereas for the apple, it must have something in it that overbalances all that skin and sugar and water weight to make it lighter. And that's because apples, on average, are 25% air for their volume. For the amount of space this takes up, literally 25% air, and that's why they float. Now in my apple investigations this month, one question I had was, do apple seeds really contain cyanide? And if so, how many apples would you have to eat with the seeds to get sick or die? Is that a myth or not? So I did some research about apple seeds, and they do contain a compound called amygdalin, a combo of sugar and cyanide that breaks down into cyanide in your bloodstream. If you eat crushed apple seeds, if you swallowed whole ones, you pr probably wouldn't get any of the cyanide at all. And even if you ate a bunch of crushed apple seeds, unless you ate an absurd amount, you probably wouldn't die. It was hard to get exact numbers online because we haven't really done any studies on apple seed overdoses, but for from what I could gather by averaging a few sources, my educated guess is that if you ate less than 50 apple seeds, you'd have no risk of cyanide poisoning. And if you ate a few hundred apple seeds, there is a chance you could get some mild cyanide poisoning, and you'd have to eat at least a thousand apple seeds to have a risk of death, probably many thousand. So. I'm gonna test inside these five apples that I picked off different trees in my yard, how many seeds are in an average apple. And then we'll know things like, if I ate every single apple in this yard with its seeds crushed, would that kill me? Let's start with this guy. How many seeds are in him? Okay, this might take a second. I'll tally the seeds as I toss them off to the side, see how many total seeds we can find. <laughs> this isn't gonna work anymore. All right, too much apple debris on my seed counter chart. 
I don't know if this science experiment gave us valid data anyway. <laughs> I think I lost some apple seeds. So I'll go with an online thing I saw, which estimated that an apple has somewhere about five to seven or so seeds in it. So mathematically, let's say that even a huge apple probably has less than 10 seeds. And combined with these other estimates, we can say that you'd have to eat more than 10 massive apples with all the seeds chewed, probably way more than that. This is a really strict estimate, but more than 10 massive apples for any risk of cyanide poisoning. And for a risk of death, you'd probably have to eat more than 100, probably many hundred or thousand, massive apples. Now do not try this yourself. I'm not recommending to test any of this. I'm just trying to say if you accidentally swallow one seed, you're not in trouble. But theoretically, I do think I have a few hundred apples in the yard, so I better make sure not to eat every single apple in my yard with all the seeds chewed. Now there's lots of delicious ways to cook apples. You can make apple pies, sauces, all sorts of stuff. But one of the simplest things that you can do to cook an apple is just wrap it in foil, toss it in the campfire, take it out after a bit, unwrap it, and you have a delicious apple pie tasting dessert. Now one last thing I had to test was how flammable are apples? Now, obviously they have such a thick skin and high water content that they're not gonna burn, but I even tried soaking apples in lighter fluid and they still wouldn't burn, except for the stem, which I guess is nifty to use as a sort of apple candy. And that's pretty much all the apple experiments I tried this month. Next year, we'll try some even crazier ones. Thanks for coming to Combo Class. Stay tuned for some more mathematical and scientific episodes coming soon. And I'll see you next time.